Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. So today is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have a few good stories. We have Apple again planning their corporate takeover of the payments world. We have a quick check-in with Chase, and they might be back to being nice. And then we finally have the release of the IHG New Rewards Program, and that's what we'll close on. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, of course, go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. Now, first things first, I'm going to start with a PSA for the channel. So if you want to skip past this to the news, I totally understand. Chapters tools will be down below. But this tends to be my best video with a reoccurring visitor. So what we're going to talk about really quick here is the comment section. Now, it's no secret if you watch videos, the comment section, it goes in waves, but it's always assaulted by these spam robots. Some are super obvious and some are not. They impersonate real people. Some steal our faces and profile pictures. You get the point. I'm sure you've encountered them. So the point of this is YouTube behind the scenes has rolled out a feature in the comments management tool called extra sensitive mode. And I'll be honest with you, it's just listed as experimental. I don't really know what it does or what it's going to do. But the point of this is two things. One, to tell you I am turning on extra sensitive mode in the comments. Why? Because eventually someone's going to get hurt, probably ripped off by these comments. Because, you know, a lot of these, even when I'm going through responding to regular comments, you see a real, per it looks like a real person like you start typing like oh this is fake clearly but they're getting better and better lately we've had a bunch of like spanish comments i don't i don't know who they think they're targeting with that but you know okay so you know and yes it just gets difficult and i you know i appreciate everyone commenting and i try to respond to all of them even if we don't agree i still i don't duck anybody you know but you know i've just got to protect the comment sections part of the job and i just can't delete them fast enough so all that to say again i don't have whatsapp i don't even use emojis in the comments because usually i'm responding from the computer keyboard you know, so that's kind of, you know, just be all on the lookout. You know, again, they even trip me up sometimes. I remember one time commenting on like an Investing with Rose video in my early days trying to get some, you know, shine for this channel. Then I thought she responded, but it turned out to be a bot. And you're like, oh, man, this pretty girl responded. Like, nope, trust me. Of course, I should have known better. I didn't, you know, actually comment after you caught it and see the WhatsApp number. But anyways, that's the public service announcement. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to see how it goes. And of course, let me know your thoughts as well if it helps or, or not. So I do hope you can understand that. But with that, we now move to the news. And the first story is Apple. And of course, you know I'm a massive Apple fanboy, so I'm going to put an Apple story in here anytime I can. Now, previously, we've talked about Apple kind of taking on the payment processing sets, um, sites, more so like a Square than like a Visa or MasterCard, if you will. You know, they also have plans to build out their own buy now, pay later service. Of course, they have the, uh, the Apple Card as well. Well, we now have some new inside information, if you will, on a project that Apple is spinning up to take on, again, those payment platforms. So, like, again, think Square, like, you know, stuff like that is what they're going after. So, here, it's called Project Breakout, and it, again, basically what it's trying to do is bring financial services fully in-house, specifically fraud and risk analysis, credit checks, customer service, and payment processing. Now, again, those are kind of things that I think end up being outsourced somewhat. You know, there's a lot of, you know, even with the card companies, you know, it, I don't think Apple's underwriting the Apple card, for example, right? But, you know, you want to bring in this stuff in-house because, one, that's they kind of do a lot of vertical integration, and it, and it works, at least on the hardware side. The M1 MacBook Pros, iPhones have had their own chips forever. Don't want to turn this into a tech show. But normally when they bring stuff in-house, you know, it actually ends up being better, you know, especially by the second, third generation. And, you know, the other part of this is you want to control the full customer experience. And realistically, you probably want all the access to all that customer data, right? Because if someone else is underwriting your product, you know, I don't know the data sharing agreements or any of that. It's really a touchy subject sometimes. But, you know, if you have that data and say, hey, well, you didn't qualify for this product, but I can sell you this other product. I mean, this is a common tactic that, you know, banks use. That's why they always have like their good, better, best, you know, checking, savings accounts, credit cards, things like that. So all this makes sense. You know, I've also seen them make a push into like business services you know the the one barrier i see really is that you know their apple is very much an ecosystem play and in the states the iphone is the biggest phone but you know worldwide it's android because there's so many different flavors of android so i think that's one interesting thing to see them try to overcome now the article did have some you know insights into how is it going right now so if we take a look at what i'm calling the current state 
we can see that Apple Pay usage lags a little bit. So, you know, that's when you use your phone. I mean, you can use your computer and stuff too, but, you know, paying through Apple Pay because they get a, a piece of that. So, you know, according to a Q1 2022 customer survey, um, from Cornerstone Advisors, roughly half, about 52% of consumers with a checking account and smartphone make mobile person-to-person -person payments. Um, Apple share of this segment is 26% in contrast to Cash App and, and PayPal, which is 76% penetrated. I believe PayPal actually owns Venmo, so that would make a lot of sense. And then, of course, we have the Apple Card. They're calling the growth outright at Nemix. So after seeing a doubling of Apple Card holders in 2020, growth in 2021 slowed to a crawl. And so, you know, that kind of makes sense because, again, I think sometimes when some of these companies are so big, you know, they kind of think they can coast on their name for quite some time. I'm not saying the Apple Card's bad by any means, but even the major issuers, no matter how big you are, have multiple flavors of products, multiple offerings. We see even Chase have to put in spend bonuses and things like that. So I do think part of this is going to have to be, you know, Apple kind of coming around and saying, hey, we may need to start thinking a little bit more like a bank and a card issuer than like, hey, we're Apple and we also have a card. If they want to push the Apple card, they might be fine with that. I mean, I don't really know. Um, yeah, so I think overall, but this is good to see. I like anytime the tech companies try to come in and challenge you know, the status quo, if you will. So I'd expect good things, not a ton of detail, but definitely something we're going to keep our eye on. Now, moving on to Chase and the House of Diamonds, talking about competitive card issuers, we are now seeing the Sapphire Preferred come back with the 80,000 point offer for $4,000 in spend. However, this time it is through referral link. I do not have a referral link, unfortunately. I, think, I don't think I can refer from the Sapphire Reserve, but if I do, I'll have one. I'll put it down below for you. Now, this is not that big of a story. I really only mention it because there was a lot of folks, you know, who, hey, just went and applied for like the 60,000 point offer. So the follow up to this point on the story is that it looks like we have some data points. And by data points, I mean like some Reddit users, like one or two saying, hey, Chase will match sign up bonuses again. When we were in the height of the competition, they had stopped doing that. And historically, this has been a practice they were doing. If you were called in within like, if you were within like 90 days, I think, of getting the card and a new offer coming out, if you phoned in, they would they would match it just you have to do the new requirements they give you the new bonus so it looks like they could be being nice again so if you got the 60k offer it's worth a phone call sooner rather than later to see if you can get bumped up to the 80k we have no idea when the 100k is coming back or if it will i mean again it took years and years and years before we saw a 100k offer so i think 80 is fine you know again if you know a friend with a referral link or something um, you know, that'd be the way to go. Again, to our earlier PSA, I get hesitant about asking people to put their links down below because no idea what the bots are going to post and posting links generally gets you blocked by the YouTube algorithm comment shield anyway. So probably don't do that. Um, you know, not that I don't want anyone to make money, but, you know, just uh, be aware of that. So with that, we move on to our final story, and this is going to be Chase and IHG. Now, we had the refreshed uh, Chase uh, IHG cards. We got two refreshed personal ones and a new business one. I'll link that video down below for you if you want to catch up. But it had been announced for some time that Chase and IHG were, or just basically just IHG, was going to change their rewards program. It ended up getting delayed a few times, and now it's finally here. We fully rolled out in June, so let's go spend the last part of this video for our IHG fans and see what we're going to get. So here we have it, IHG1 Rewards. Now it's gonna be fully live on June of 2022, so a little bit later this year. A milestone rewards is basically what it's like. So it starts after 20 stays. Um, you can choose your rewards every 10th night, and you have 90 days from hitting the next status tier um, to choose the reward, so we'll talk about that. Now, what are the options where you can get bonus points? You can get a food and beverage credit, which comes out to about $20 valuation. They have a lounge membership, which is good for the remainder of the year that you select it. Um, then you have confirmable suite upgrades, which is good for one year after selection. Now, in addition to that, you can see here, this is the tiers that we have. So I'll leave this on screen for a while. I'm not really going to go through all of it. But for example, you see, once you stayed 20 nights, you can choose one of the following. 5,000 bonus points, two food and beverage rewards, or one comfortable suite upgrade. And if you jump down like 40, 40 nights, you get a bonus choice. So you can choose two of the following, you know, 10,000 points, five credits, food and beverage, one comfortable suite upgrade for the limit of one or one annual lounge membership, all the way up to basically 100 nights is where it caps out at. And then you've got, you know, 10,000 points or five food and, food and beverage credits. So each time you move up 10 nights, you get to choose a new thing. Now, here we have the IHG One Rewards tiers. I believe we've shown this before, but you know, again, on the far left, you have the name of it, then you have the night qualification, the points qualification, and then the bonus points you're going to earn for it. So again, I'll leave these two up for a little bit, and I'll also link to it down below if you want to see more of it. 
Now, overall, I don't think this is really that bad by any means. There's one thing to keep in mind, though, you know, when you have the credit cards and the credit cards give you status or give you credit, or like Elite Night credits, you, to get the reward tiers, you still have to actually do the stays. You can't necessarily say, hey, I have the card and it gives me platinum status, so I'm shortcutting to, you know, 40 nights or whatever it is. That doesn't really work that way, so just be aware of that. But overall, I do like the Choose Your Own Adventure. I think the options are nice, you know. Because again, as it scales up, you know, if you say, hey, I have more than enough points because I have the credit cards, I don't need any more bonus points. I need, you know, some something else. I need food and beverage, or I'm still getting bonus points because of my status. You know, I can pick, and you can kind of pick what's what's useful to you, and because it changes every 10 nights, you know, I think that's fine. So overall, I think, you know, not too bad for IHG, but again, um, I've told you before, I'm not a super huge, you know, super familiar with IHG, so I'd be uh, interested to get your thoughts for you IHG faithfuls down below. But anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. Of course, my question for you guys is, you know, one, let me know, you know, your thoughts about the PSA we had in the beginning. You know, I don't like to take up a ton of video talking about, you know, things that aren't the news, but I did feel it was important. And of course, on a more fun note, let me know what other stories you've seen. What hopes do you have for Apple taking on payment processors like Venmo or, you know, Squarespace? And of course, IHG fans, sound off. Let us know. Defend your favorite hotel property. I know you guys are out there. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll talk to you very soon on Monday.